Praise God. <laughs> Amen. I, I think I knocked down a few more idols in the temple. <laughs> or at least as soon as you guys wake up and start to pass this last one around about Jesus not being God. I thought you guys knew that. Wow. Oh, I heard a lot of religious people talking that way. And, uh, you know, an uh, old Siftic believer, uh, he told me about that King James Version. I didn't pay much attention to it. I, uh, my reading's always been about the uh, New American Standard. So, NAS. Uh, because I didn't, you know, all those these and thous and stuff. But, I mean, even when I did read from the King James, I mean, I was grateful for the King James. Actually, I came up in the King James, and the thing that was I was grateful for was that in the King James, uh, it's, you had the red letter edition. Ooh, I really like that, man. Because when I first came into studying the Word of God, once I realized that the red letters was the words of Jesus, I ain't reading nothing else. <laughs> I couldn't care less what their questions were. All I wanted to know was what his answers were. Amen? So I just ate that red letter edition up. And actually, my NAS is a red letter edition too, so amen, Jesus. I'm, I'm glad they kept that. Uh, anyway, yeah, Brother Siftit Believer, I, I hear you. There may be a tendency to be more religious uh, uh, connected to the King James Version. Might be something to that. I ain't sure. I ain't saying it so, but there might be something to that. So, uh, thanks for the tip. Amen. <laughs> As we teach, we're taught. So, uh, yeah, I finished this round of subject. Yeah, I might want to throw this one out at you too, because a lot of you, <laughs> I, if you didn't know that about Jesus, uh, that uh, Paul told us when he explained to us about. The tabernacle being the outer, okay, and the flesh being the nature. Uh, I thought you guys got that. He wasn't just talking about us. He was talking about a eternal truth that was true of all men, including Jesus, okay? <laughs> his flesh is his nature. That's why Jesus said, uh, you see me, you see the Father. In other words, in his very nature. But <laughs> Jesus, the man, trust me, was not God. I, I don't understand how, in a reasonable person's mind, you can say that he was God and that you killed, so you killed God, huh? <laughs> how, how do you kill an eternal being? God is unkillable. You can't kill him. It would have, the, the offering that had to be put on this altar had to be the physical realm. It had to be man. It couldn't be. You know, I shared all this stuff in these tapes already. I, so I'm having a hard... Oh, I know what it is. I, I'm just one of these Johnny-come-lately kind of guys. Uh, the fact that, uh, that there may be any divinity connected to me <laughs> at all never struck your mind, did it? Okay. So, like, you're really looking for the sons and daughters to come, huh? Because I can guarantee you there's divinity connected with them through the blood. See, Sister Samu just went through her blood transfusion. <laughs> and the blood transfusion got finished, spirit, soul, and body. Okay. Amen. Now to get ready to go into another thing, which she'll come, she'll come into it. You know, I never seen nobody come to that point in the Father and uh, not come the rest of the way. So she, she'll be on the videos pretty soon explaining to you different understanding about things now that she's seeing them in a different light regarding the revelation of the body of Christ. It may take, well, I don't know, a few days, but she'll be back on here. She'll let you know. Amen. Anyway, uh, so you probably don't know that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and uh, the uh, Lord being here is not the New Testament. <laughs> That's not the New Testament. New Testament doesn't start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, 
And you want you you need to reread what he was talking about, the 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 will of the testator. Okay, uh, he was the person giving the testimony, his journey here. He's the testator. Okay, his will, the will of a testator, does not come into effect, which is the new covenant, until after the death. Well. If the will or new covenant did not start until after his death, then he must be uh, right. The finished work of the old covenant. Da -da! So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, my brothers and sisters, is the testimony to natural Israel to the. Well, I don't like calling them Jews, okay? Because they explain to you who a true Jew is. So let's just call it natural Israel, all right? Anyway, he was a fulfillment, and actually, if you want to look at it, the sixth book of Moses, because Moses spoke of it, all right? Of that prophet that would come as he did. They haven't received that sixth book yet. And I, I guess I come in with six because it's like the fulfilling of man of, in natural Israel. That's why the covenant ended with them. Their covenant that, that ended. There are the promises uh, made to Abraham and the oath sworn to David, but none of them have anything to do with the covenant. Okay. Study that stuff a little bit more. You get, you'll get it. You'll get it. It's, it's under the surface a little bit, but you'll get it. Just... Go back over there now and reread it with a little more magnification on these things, which Paul said we need to look more closely. And he meant more closely. In other words, every little word and nuance and ooh, because every detail. That's why most people don't get the book of Hebrews. They read too, through it too fast. You cannot read the book of Hebrews properly. Uh, actually, the book of Hebrews itself requires a study, a period of study. But you see, when people start studying in the natural, oh my God, it's such a mess. No, no, no. It's, a, it's If it's not done with the Holy Spirit's presence with you to help you to see what's under the surface of the natural or literal word, okay? The literal word is the dead letter. I hope you guys understand that. That's the dead letter. It's the natural. It's the ground. It's the earth. It's the surface. That's why the parable that I shared with about vineyard owner, uh, it, it's under the surface that I received that. That was the manna that was given to me, heavenly manna, of which I believe all the sons and daughters start to receive. Because he said, He who has overcome shall I give to him of the heavenly manna. So Sister Samuel is going to receive some heavenly manna. Amen? And then she'll become a witness to the testimony of the truth of what I've been sharing with you. There's no way around it. She has to because she's becoming a, a daughter. Therefore, and I know I'm a son, so uh, she has to begin to witness to the truth of what I've been saying. And actually it's not us, it's the Father through us, but uh, you know, all honor and glory goes to the Father for those of you who are uh, pontificating upon yourselves <laughs> and just unleashing uh, that you're going to do. <laughs> ah, the Father, Father, Father. Uh, Jesus came to bring honor and glory to the Father. He allowed himself to be put to death on the cross. So our sins could be forgiven. So if there's any pontificating going on, I really think it ought to be towards the Father and the Son and not us. Okay? So let's try to keep the pontifications down to a minimum. <laughs> How about not at all? Anyway, uh, praise God. Yeah, it's the Old Testament, brother. That's why, it, well, okay. You're not able to see that 
the Lord's journey in his ministry was a type of what's taking place for the sons and daughters. Well, because it's part of the Old Testament. He's part of Israel. He's the fulfilling of natural Israel. Okay? The righteousness of the law of natural Israel. He, the physical, natural person, did not come to put an end to the laws. He did not come to Israel to put an end to the laws. He came to fulfill them. But he, the resurrected Lord, in the new covenant, established the greater, upon greater promise, through his blood, the Melchizedek priesthood. Sons and daughters of God, of which the wheat, the children of God, are gathered in up under the wings of God represented by the wings of the saviors who come down from the mountain of God, where which salvation comes forth. So, when you read about Jesus, look, his, look at his journey, look at his walk, look where he came from, all of the places he went to, and there's a type of that in relationship to the journey spiritually of the sons and daughters, because they come the same way that he did right to a death, burial, and resurrection. The dead in Christ who rise up first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, can't think of anything else. Just that when you read about... Uh, <laughs> well, I was posted here by my brother uh, about uh, the word was made flesh. Okay, go read about what Paul said the flesh was. You gotta understand what the flesh was. Then go back and read the flesh. It represents the nature of who we are, the spirit of life-giving spirit of God the Father was in the blood of the manned tabernacle named Jesus. Alright? The spirit of man is in his blood, us, of which our nature represents that unlit candle, okay, that's in darkness. Anger, hatred, envy, strife, blah, 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 blah. That's the flesh nature. That's the nature of the flesh. So when Jesus said, you see not the Father, it's because the blood that was in his veins was undefiled. It was holy, sanctified. That's why the Immaculate Conception. It was this life-giving Spirit of God. It's God who breathed upon man. The life-giving Spirit it brought him to life. It's the Father in the blood of the man, the tabernacle, named Jesus. The very nature of how and who he was, how he walked, how he talked, how he expressed himself, everything about the nature of Jesus was the Father. But he was not God the Father. Come on, you guys. He didn't go around talking to the Father outside of himself. Do you realize what that would be considered to be in psychological terms on this earth? <laughs> I hope to God none of you are talking to yourselves. <laughs> I talk out loud, but I believe it's to the Spirit of God in the counsel of the Spirit of God. So I talk all the time. I'm talking to the Spirit of God, to the counsel of God. But I'm not talking to myself, and neither did Jesus. All right? He was talking to the Father. You know, you can't talk to the Father from outside of yourself if you are the Father. <laughs> Come on. Even in, I told you a lot of the problem with the body of Christ is just good old-fashioned common sense. They're, uh, I don't know, oblivious to it or something. Amen. Love you.